Have you heard of the Bereans? According to the Apostle Paul, they were noble-minded because they neither accepted nor rejected his message until they had first checked it against the scriptures to see if it was really true. Welcome to Truth Matters with Sean Finnegan. Our aim here at Truth Matters is to be as the Bereans each week by interviewing guest speakers and investigating topics, testing them against the scriptures to discover truth and shed falsehood. And now, here is your host, Sean Finnegan. Hello, welcome to Truth Matters. My name is Sean Finnegan, and for the next half hour, I'll be speaking with one of our elders here at Living Hope, Reverend John Courtright. John has an associate's in theology and has studied and taught the Bible for over 30 years, and he managed our children's program here at Living Hope for 10 years. Uh, Welcome to the show, John. Uh, Thanks, Sean. It's a privilege to be here. Last week, we talked to Steve Taylor, the pastor from Arizona, about the subject of the truth about heaven. And he shared that heaven is not actually the destination of the righteous, but rather the righteous are going to rise from the dead when Jesus returns, and then they're going to inherit the kingdom of God, and that the dead are actually asleep in their graves until that happens. So this week, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about the flip side. So we're titling today's show, The Truth About Hell. So before we get into that, I first wanted to ask you, uh, John, just a couple of questions about your journey of faith. What what I want to know is how did you first become so interested in the Bible and in Christianity in general? I was grew up in a major denomination in Michigan, in the Midwest, and um, I was always really into Sunday school uh, with my family and was very interested in God and the things of God. As I was uh, getting older, my brothers and sisters who really weren't that interested started being involved with um, home fellowships. And uh, I always considered my brothers and sisters hippies. Uh, they were in the, <laughs> okay. you know, that, that 60s generation. And and suddenly they were uh, carrying Bibles around and, and, and very excited about it. And uh, so I started attending some of these fellowships. And I was amazed how much, you know, I, I knew a lot about religion, but I knew very little about the Bible. And I, I was amazed how much uh, my brothers and sisters knew. So I decided one day I was going to uh, sit and, and really try and listen and learn. And I... I uh, I distinctly remember going to church one day and saying, God, I, I really want to know the Bible. And, and How uh, old were you about this time? I was probably, I don't know, 10. I was young, oh, 10, 11. Wow. But I wanted to know. And then I, you know, I sat there with, with a mind wanting to know. And, and I'll, uh, I'll never forget the minister. He, he didn't open a verse of the Bible, and he simply said, uh, Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Her, his fleece was white as snow. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. And then he went on, and I—I I, who was this? It was, this was a this was the pastor of, of the church that I grew up in, and I realized I didn't know that much, and so then I started going to the Bible and and uh, my own study with my brothers and sisters, and then started going to uh, more fellowships, and um and one day I was at a uh, I went to a Christian festival, and I was sitting around many Christians, just saw the love of God, and I'd, I'd never experienced people that were so in love with God, so bold about their faith, and it was like, I want I want that. And uh, I remember that night sitting there, and it was a beautiful night in August. You know, shooting stars were all over that night. It was one of those asteroid uh, oh, wow. nights, you know. Yeah. I sat there, and, and I remember telling God, uh, I want to know you. I, I really want to know more about you. And that was really the start of my journey with with a personal devotion. And since then, I went to a Bible college, and and I pretty much I've been studying it and teaching uh, home fellowships, and then uh, been involved with our church here for you know since we started things here. Right, since <laughs> the first first day that first we... day we built, and uh, ten years before uh, meeting in hotels and stuff. So, just been a love of mine. Mm-hmm. It's a passion. So I've been studying it, and I particularly in the, in the recent, maybe the last five years, I've got very interested in the Hebrew Scriptures, studying the Old Testament. Uh, mm-hmm. We taught a, did a whole te- Old Testament studies class here at the church, and uh, and just a couple years ago, I was uh, really privileged to be part of a group from Regent University um, out of Virginia, and got to go to Israel for ten days. And uh, and in that, I was studying some of the things we'll look at uh, with uh, the topic of hell and. Uh, uh, it was a great time. That was just a fantastic. Time. So on the subject of hell, I've heard you preach on this subject at uh, <laughs> Living Hope, and it's it seems to be something that you've covered a couple times, I think, o- over the years. Yes, it it has, and uh, um, and I think you did a survey too. Yeah, that's. I was going to tell you the <laughs> the first thing I because I, I I always say from my experience, most people don't have the first clue about what hell is. 
I, I mean, I've always said that. And I thought, you know, I don't, I don't really have anything to substantiate that statement. I, I make that statement. So for a year, I went around and I just surveyed people, sometimes at lunch hours and sometimes in weekends, uh, meeting people. And mm -hmm. not one person that I talked to really gave what I believe is the biblical understanding of, of what hell is. I'll uh -huh. give you, here's some of the things. That, you want to hear what some people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, some people, most people, I think, believe that a hell is a place where bad people go after they die. You know, they okay. say if you're good, you go to heaven. If you're bad, you go to hell. And that's, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, without any understanding why they believe it, just because it's like the thing they that's what many believe. I think it's from the cartoons. Yes. Some people think that we live in hell today. Uh, I right, talk to. Yeah. I get that a um, lot if I ask people. <laughs> this is hell. Uh, one big thing I think, and that's I think is growing, especially with the uh, big atheist movement and the agnostics, that people believe that hell is simply a concept devised by religion to keep people in bondage through fear. Right. And, it's uh, a fear tactic. Yes, that it's a tactic and it's a made-up religion. Some people believe there's no such place as hell. And another thing, people believe it's a fiery torment where the devil and all his hosts live. Right. And um, and none of those things are what I believe is the biblical use of hell. Okay, so so what is <laughs> so what is the biblical view of hell? Or if you had to summarize it in just a, a few sentences, uh, how would you sum it up? I don't know if I could sum it up in a few things because, first of all, I think there's wrong translations. Right. And so when I say hell, it means something totally different. When I think of hell, I actually think of hell fire or Gehenna right. or the lake of fire. Okay. But what, what, Now, what do you mean by Gehenna? Uh, you want to get to that Let later? me get to that. Let oh. me go through the, the different things. First of all, I think one of the, one of the verses that I think uh, really describes something very well, let me read this, is from Ecclesiastes. Because um, the, the Bible, especially from a Hebrew and an Old Testament version, is very clear that when you're dead, you're dead. Um, and I believe it was on the day of Pentecost when uh, Peter stood up and said, David said, David didn't ascend to heaven, but he is left in what's called Hades, right, in the grave. right. Um, and Jesus was the only one that has resurrected out from the grave. And I, I, I remember Jesus said in John 3.13, no one has ascended into heaven right, except for the Son of Man. Exactly. He's the only one. So this idea that people are ascending... Is not a biblical concept, especially from a Hebrew understanding. And this verse in Ecclesiastes, I as always, from a young man, this just made so much sense to me. It says in Ecclesiastes chapter nine, in verse five, says, "For the living know that they will die, but the dead do not know anything, nor they have the, a longer reward, for their memory is forgotten." And then it says in verse. 10, whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, for there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol where you are going. Now, I'm not sure, what's, what's your understanding? The Hebrew I hear pronounced different ways. Uh, oh, how to pronounce it? Yeah, I, I always say Sheol, but I think it's Sheol. Uh, I, I think it's Sheol, or something Sheol. like that, but most yeah. people say Sheol. Yeah. I'm not good enough to, with, yeah. with the Hebrew so, to, to correct anybody well, good. on that the, one. That, that will get along great. Because <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry. S-H-E-O-L. <laughs> yes, you know, Sheol. So if you're in the south, it's Sheol. Yes. If you're in the north, it's Sheol. <laughs> Sheol. And if you're Hebrew, it's Sheol or, or something like or that. Or Sheol. Yeah. Like so. that. But um, that word, there's a Greek equivalent, Hades, in the New Testament. Now, right. Those words, the Old Testament is always Sheol, and the New Testament is Hades. And those two words uh, in the King James Version mm -hmm. are translated hell. Right. Um, as is the word Gehenna translated hell. But they're different different meanings. Shoal is, uh, in the King James Version, I can tell you, 31 times it's translated the grave, and 31 times it's translated hell. <laughs> okay. And three times it's translated the pit. Hades, in the New Testament, is translated grave one times and hell ten times. Okay. But all these words really mean, I use the word gravedom. It's the state right. of the dead. The realm of the dead. Realm the of, the, of dead. the dead. It's the state of the right. dead. That, that right. it's, it's not the grave. It's not the physical location, like you know the plot of ground. The, right. It's the, more abstract. Yes, yes, very abstract. And it's, it's the location where dead. And the only escape from Sheol is Jesus Christ, is the resurrection. Right. And, and, and he was the first one to break the bars of Sheol and come up. Um, and what it says here in Ecclesiastes is that in that state of Shoal where you're going, there's no activity, right. there's no planning, no knowledge, there's no wisdom. There's, you know, you're not walking around the world visiting your grandchildren. 
in Sheol. Right. There's you're dead. Right. So and, so even if Sheol meant hell or, or something like that, it would be a very different view of hell than is commonly held. Absolutely. Because there's no activity, no right. planning. If you want to translate Sheol or Hades hell, right. then I tell people, well, then Jesus Christ went to hell for okay. three days and three nights. Right. Because he was in the grave, right. in that state of death. And that's what that word means. Right. Then I think if we translated it hell, we have to deal with all the baggage. Oh, yes. And, and the s- mythology that's kind of caked onto that word. Absolutely. So maybe that's why in modern versions... They just leave the Hebrew word, transliterated into English, yes. Sheol, and then in the uh, New Testament, Hades. Hades, yes. S- but uh, Sheol and Hades are the same thing. Absolutely. Okay. And, and that that is when a person dies, they go to Sheol. And we would just say Hades. the grave. The, the grave. grave that, and to me, the grave, the grave is, to, to grave them. Right, to grave them, to that state of, of the grave. And I think that's the simple, It's you know, and then there is escape from that, and that's the resurrection. And that's the hope. That was the Hebrews' hope. And that's our hope today. As Paul said, I'm not teaching anything different than what all the what the prophets taught. Right. That there will be a resurrection of the just, both of the just and the unjust. And to therefore I conduct my life in light of that future hope mm-hmm. of the resurrection. And it's very simple. It's very when you understand the truth, it's very easy to understand. It's really right. it makes sense. Oh, it's it's great. You know, you're right. not trying to make up something and you're not wondering if you're mom's up in you know, your grandma's up. it's just yeah. the, all the things that come with that and the baggage that comes it's uh, it, the truth is freeing, and it's it's really wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, so what about this Gehenna though? I mean, no, we were Gehenna. talking about Sheol and Hades, but uh, what about Gehenna. Gehenna? In in Mark chapter nine, well, I'll just read from verse forty-five. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than having your two feet to be cast into hell. Now, here the New American Standard translates that hell. I believe King James translates hell fire here. It's the word Gehenna. And then it says in verse 47, if your eye causes you to stumble, throw it out. For it is better you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell, into Gehenna. In verse 43 here, he says, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter life crippled than having your two hands go into hell, Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. That's is the Gehenna, the unquenchable fire. This is really, really something. This is a, a very interesting. Gehenna is not a Greek word. It actually comes from Hebrew. Okay. And um, it comes from two g- different Hebrew words. One is Gehe, and the other is Hanam. And Gehe means the valley of. Okay. The valley of Hanam. That's the literal translation of Gehenna is... Uh. The Valley of Hanam. Well, well, what's significant about yeah, that? Yeah, what's what's that? <laughs> what, what's up with that? Well, if you, in Israel, I mean in Jerusalem, south of the city of Jerusalem, you have to the east of Jerusalem, you have the Kidron Valley. And to the south, you have the Hanam Valley. And it's actually, I believe it was named after sons of Hanam uh, during the time of Joshua. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I'm not sure the whole story there, but it was named after that way back in the book of Joshua, that this valley, which is south of Jerusalem, still today, if you go to Jerusalem, and I went here to this location, it is the Valley of Hinnom. So you've been you've been to the Valley of Hinnom. I've been to Gehenna. <laughs> been you've to, been there. I've been to the Valley of Hinnom today. Now, why is that significant? During the time of Israel, the Canaanites, the land of the Canaanites, when those that worship Moloch, they did a very evil, idolatrous practice. And in the Valley of Hinnom, they built a altar that was called Tophet, T-O-P-H-E-T, Tophet. Yeah, I've heard of that before. And they would they would literally burn, offer their children in the fire it's just, on this yeah. altar of Tophet. They burn their children there yeah. in the Valley of Hanam. Sometimes you'll see in the Old Testament where it says, don't let your children pass through the fire. It's talking right. about don't let your children be offered to these false gods mm-hmm. on this fire that burns in Tophet. And this really was one of the sins that really fi- was the final straw that broke the camel's back for the nation of Judah. In the book of Jeremiah, this was practice was going on, mm-hmm. where the people were offering their children to false gods, burning their children alive in Tophet. Just a very evil thing. And in Jeremiah 19, Jeremiah, God told him, said, get a clay pot and get the elders of Israel, and I'd like you to 
have them go with you and go down to the Valley of Hanam. Gehe Hanam. Gehe okay. Hanam. And go down there. So go to Gehenna. Go to Gehenna. With this clay pot. With this clay pot. And when you're there, I want you to break it in front of them. And when he did that, he then told them, therefore, he said, behold, the days come, saith the Lord. This is all in Jeremiah chapter 19. That this place shall no longer be called Tophet. That was this place they burned. Nor the valley of the son of Hanam. Nor Gehe Hanam. But it shall be called the valley of slaughter. Okay. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee. So then he breaks the clay pot and shall say to them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break the people with this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet till there be no place to bury. This was a place of slaughter where the people were going to be destroyed. There was going to be a place of destruction of the sinful people of Jerusalem. This then became figurative, representing the end of, when God is going to do the final judgment upon everybody, when he will actually physically right. destroy, and there's going to be a fire that's going to be burning, and that fire is going to be the lake of fire. And in this location, Gehenna, and it became known. Um, and, and so you, these uh, this, these pieces of pottery that you have here in the oh, studio. Yes, when I was in Jerusalem. I mean, everybody, you know, in Jerusalem, everybody wants to go to all the, you know, all the places. I want to see where Christ was born. I want to see he was resurrected. I want to see where the church was. I want to see, you know, I want right. to go to yeah. all these places. I wanted to go to hell, <laughs> the Valley of Hanum. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, my good friend Richard Alton, great believer, a wonderful man, was with me. And uh, we had a little break from uh, the other people. And we were at the Dan Panorama Hotel, which was on the south of Jerusalem, and, and I knew the location, and nobody goes here, and it was kind of a desolate little place there, and we took our afternoon off, and we walked down into uh, the Valley of Hanam, and uh, and there... Is uh, that on, like, the, the map they have there yeah, in Israel? You, yeah, you can Modern see... Modern day? Yeah, you see the Valley of Hanam, you can, right wow. where it is, and you go down there, and you're, you're, you know, you're down in this valley, and read we read these uh, verses from Jeremiah and as we're reading them, and Richard looks down and he goes hey look and he found these little pieces of clay pottery so <laughs> we brought those home and uh, put them on this little plaque I have and, but as we're down there Richard who's a, into science starts we talk we start you know we're down there we're saying geez I wonder could this really be not only figurative could this have a physical representation of what's going to happen in uh, in the book of Isaiah when it's figuratively talking about the future uh, well it talks about the Assyrian and it's, uh -huh. many believe is a type for what's going to happen with the beast in the future. Right. It says that he, south of Jerusalem, is going to be burned on Tophet, on God's fire in Tophet. Okay. And, you know, we should look at these verses while we're sitting in this, in this valley. And Richard, the scientist, he is, he goes, yeah, you know, there's going to be an earthquake. And uh, there's a fault line that goes through Israel. Oh, yeah, that's and, the, the, and there's big, volcan the great fault right, line there. Right, and there's volcanic action. He goes, you know, and, if that, if there's, and we see the Mount of Olives. He's on that split, and if a volcano came up there and the stuff would rush down, he goes, I could see an actually physical lake of fire. <laughs> well, we're talking, it's like, you know what, I think it's, I think it's time to get out of here. Let's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to the hotel. Let's go back to the hotel. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that, whether that's really a literal place, or whether it's figurative of what's going to happen in the future. Right. There is a fire there is coming, a, a fiery judgment. A fiery coming. Of the and, wicked. And, uh, you know, there's actually, the whole thing is that actually geologically this could happen too. All right. Well, let's pause our conversation here. And we'll be right back after just a short break. Our show today is called The Truth About Hell. And we're talking about the biblical view of hell as opposed to what is commonly seen on TV in uh, books, and in mythology. And so stay tuned. I'm Sean Finnegan talking with Reverend John Courtright, and we'll be right back on Truth Matters right after this. Welcome back. I'm Sean Finnegan. You're listening to Truth Matters, and I'm speaking with Reverend John Courtright on the subject of hell. Our show is called The Truth About Hell. So, John, where do we go in the Bible to get more information about understanding the timing of this fiery judgment? In the book of Revelation is when, after Jesus Christ, when our Lord comes back, the beast and the false prophet are thrown into this lake of fire. They're the first ones that go in. They're the first ones to take the dive into the lake. And then, <laughs> and then in, in Revelation 20, after the thousand years... The devil is taken, and he's thrown in this lake of fire. 
And then in uh, 20 verse 14, it says, then death and Hades. So now death and Hades engraved them. Right. They're thrown into this lake of fire. So it's got to be more than just a physical it's this fire. This is but, the second death. And it says, this is the second death. The lake of fire. So, so what does that mean? If death is thrown into the lake of fire, or Hades is thrown, what is that? What is that saying? Then, then death is no more. In, in Nobody Corinth, dies anymore after right, that. This is this is until the time we have death. And 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 it says in Corinthians, it just fits perfect. It, after it talks about the reign of Christ, that says he's going to reign until all right. enemies are put under his feet, which is this thousand year reign that's talked about here in chapter twenty. It then says, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death, and right. that's yeah. right here. When this lake of fire, in that time, death will be destroyed. Right. And it all... It all fits together. Yeah, it all fits. And this yeah. is called a second death. And what Jesus said is, this, don't be afraid of him that can kill the body and soul. If if you're living today and and your conviction in Christ may cause you to die, or, or what people say to you, you know, where he says, don't be afraid of him that can kill your body. Be afraid of the one that can take both body and soul and cast them into Gehehanam. Right. Into, the, into this... Because the second death, you know, and 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 that's in the those who are in the first resurrection are saved from the second death. Well, it's interesting that verse Matthew ten twenty eight says, "Who God is able to destroy both soul and body in hell." Yes. So, if God destroys the body and the soul in hell, then that's that's it. And is that the word? That's Gehenna there, yep, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That he, He's, that's where the destruction, the final destruction of the body and soul is in Gehenna. <laughs> Just beautiful. So why is it so common, do you think, that people believe that the wicked are in hell right now getting tormented? A, a couple things on that. The idea of torment comes up. Sometimes the, I believe when you first start seeing it, even in, in Daniel chapter 12, where it says in the resurrection, some will be raised to everlasting life and others to everlasting contempt. You right, know, some right. people say, well, it's, it's everlasting contempt. Another place says that they are going to be tormented. In here in Revelation 20, even while, while I have my book open there, you have the verse that says, 20 verse 10, And the devil who deceived them was thrown in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so there's where you get this idea of torment. Now, as far as why people think people are in hell now, I don't think there's any way you can get that in the Bible. I right. really don't. I, the torment, I can see a little some verses where you can understand this idea of, of right. an eternal torment. But but the, but the idea of that not now yet. that you're right that the people that die now are either in heaven or are in hell. It's just not a biblical concept. Right. It's it's, it's mythology. Yeah, it's mythology. And the early church fathers didn't write it, didn't didn't write this way. And until you get late into the late uh, second, second third century second, third yeah. centuries, then then after about a thousand years and uh, Dante's Divine Comedy was a very popular thing written mm -hmm. around 1300, and that was this guy that goes travels through these 22 steps from hell and purgatory, right. and that probably had more influence on the secular culture, just the basic layman, right. than many things. It was it, that Divine Comedy gave all, the, and it's not a biblical concept, huh. you know. So now we come today, and then you get like you say today, you have the TV shows, and you know, how many shows are there where you have ghosts and you know, right now you got the sixth sense and you have the ghost whispers. I mean, TV shows, right? Where the people are people from the dead are coming and talking to them, and they're and, and they always have <clears throat> Satan in hell. Yes, as if like he he likes it right. there, like and, that's where he lives, and, and and you know this whole idea. None of that happens. The first ones that are ever going to be thrown into the lake of fire are the beast and the false prophet, and that does not occur until after Jesus Christ comes right. back. Right. And then the next one that's thrown in, as far as I understand, is the devil. Right. After the thousand years, and then is the great white throne judgments when all the dead will be raised from the state of Hades, and anyone who is not written in the book of life will be thrown in to the lake of fire. Then death and hell are thrown into the lake of fire. Yeah, and there's a verse too in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, that goes along with this, and it says, But for the cowardly, unbelieving, and abominable and murder murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, if if this is death, then it's the people aren't alive. You know, that's just by definition. Exactly. Uh, I think we look at verses like Romans six twenty three, where it says, "The wages of sin is death." But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. 
the punishment for the wicked held out all throughout Scripture. Uh, we could look at Psalm 37 where it says the wicked are going to be cut off. They're going to be destroyed from the land. Mm-hmm. You will look for their place. You will not find them. You're not going to have them burning in a uh, pit nearby. So, you know, in, in the Scripture, I think what we see is that death is the penalty for the wicked to be burned to death in this fire. Now, there might be a question of how long that will go on for. You mm-hmm. know, will, will they burn for a day or just instantly burn? And and I've heard people talk on both sides of that, and I honestly I haven't been able to to see see that issue with clarity exactly how long. But yeah. you know, if we have death and and Hades thrown into the uh, fire at Gehenna, then at that point there's no more death. And we look at the description in Revelation 21 and 22, the last two chapters of the Bible, mm-hmm. and everything's good. Right. And nothing would ruin a party more than people screaming in agony in a burning fire. You know what I mean? So, well, and, and the whole and and I mean it's, it's interesting that when you as you were just talking here that every person that has ever been born, whether they like it or not, they are going to get raised from the dead. Right. Nobody. Nobody's. Nobody's not. And they're all going to be either in the first resurrection or the second resurrection. In the second resurrection, everyone who has not believed that was not part of the first resurrection, or what other other reasons they may be part of that resurrection, mm-hmm. and they're going to be judged. And it says if they're not found in the book of life, they are cast into this lake of fire. Right. And death isn't destroyed yet. So this is all the people go in here. Then after every is cast in there, then death is destroyed. Right. Until then, it hasn't. But yeah, like you yet. said in Corinthians 15, then death, then the last enemy will be destroyed. Right. Then the last enemy. Until the time that that death is with us, and that second death is forever. It's been a, a good conversation. There's definitely some questions that we still yeah, have on absolutely. this and you know as a listener if you have a very strong opinion on the subject of hell and you'd like to share with us your thoughts on it uh, log into our website truthmattersradio.com and drop a comment by all means and if you want to engage with uh, John Courtright directly we'll be sure to pass on any comments that are made to, to him I think by doing this we can work together to come to a better understanding of things don't believe it because we say it and uh, don't automatically th- Dismiss it because we say it. Check it out and see what the scriptures say. So thanks so much for coming on, John. Thank you. It's been been a privilege. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for listening to Truth Matters with Pastor Sean Finnegan, where pursuing truth is more important than preserving tradition. If you like what you heard on this program, please check us out on the web at truthmattersradio.com or stop by Living Hope Community Church in Latham, right behind Peter Harris Plaza on Route 7, where we will be holding our weekly Sunday service in just an hour at 1030 a.m. If you'd like to access our archive of previous shows or leave us feedback, log on to truthmattersradio.com or give us a call at 518-785-8888.